If I asked you to sum up Mark Webber's career in one word, what would you say? Regretful? Unlucky? Unfulfilled? There's no doubting that on Webber's day, he was phenomenally quick over one lap. An example of this was during a wet qualifying for the 2010 Malaysian Grand Prix, where he took pole position by 1.3 seconds after being the only driver brave enough to put on intermediate tyres as the track was drying in the latter stages of Q3. Compared to most drivers we see today, he entered the sports relatively late at 25 years old with Minardi. Prior to his Formula 1 debut in Australia 2002, he really had to battle his way through junior formulas to make it to Formula 1. In 1997, he very nearly quit halfway through his British Formula 3 campaign due to lack of sponsorships. But Australian rugby union legend David Campes loaned him £40,000 to continue racing. In my eyes, he's always had that very gritty, never say die mentality and has never backed down from any challenge. If we take a look at his career on the whole, it was pretty decent, achieving 9 wins, 42 podiums and 13 pole positions. Although you could say he should have achieved a lot more success, especially in Red Bull. But a young prodigy named Sebastian Vettel instantly seized control of the team and he slowly but surely dwindled down into a firm number 2 driver. But looking at his career, I want to answer this question. Just how good was Mark Webber? Webber's first Formula 1 start was eventful, to say the least. At the 2002 Australian Grand Prix, a collision between Ralph Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello triggered a chain reaction of other collisions, forcing eight cars into retirement. After starting P18, Mark managed to come out on the other side in 8th place. On lap 3, however, Webber's differential and traction control started to malfunction, but he managed to make his way up to 5th place on lap 25. On lap 37, he became the first driver of the top 6 to make a stop, but after a 35 second pit stop disaster, Webber rejoined in 6th place. He ended up battling with Mika Salo for 5th towards the end and fended off the much faster Toyota while managing his broken differential to take home 2 points in his home Grand Prix. This would end up being the highlight of the season as he wouldn't go on to score another points finish all year. But on the whole, it was a very positive start to his Formula 1 career as he massively outperformed his teammates Alex Young and Anthony Davidson. Fast forward to 2003, the Aussie moved to Jaguar, racing alongside Antonio Pazonia for the first 11 races of the season and then Justin Wilson for the remaining 5. Once again, he proved his amazing talent in many instances throughout the year. For example, in the Brazilian Grand Prix qualifying session, he qualified third on the grid to take Jaguar's best qualifying performance in their four-year history at the time. Another mesmerizing drive came at the Austrian Grand Prix after starting from the pit lane and serving a drive through penalty, he managed to finish an incredible 7th place and set the 3rd fastest lap of the race only behind the two Ferraris of Schumacher and Barrichello. He finished the season 10th place in the championship, 11 on points with Jensen Button, but the Brits won on counts back. Nevertheless, Webber's amazing results earned it plaudits in the press as he won the 2003 Driver of the Year award from Autocar magazine. Coming off a great year in his debut with Jaguar, Webber was looking to improve his performance in 2004. He started the season with a very impressive 6th place in qualifying in Australia, but he was forced into retirement after a gearbox failure. At the following race in Malaysia, he produced another stunning qualifying lap to split the Ferraris and start on the front row of the grid for the first time. But after a bad start, a collision and a penalty, he was left frustrated and spun into the gravel, ending his race for good. He did take a few points here and there throughout the year, but his season was plagued with unreliability and in the end, he finished 13th in the championship. Mark spent the next two years with Williams driving alongside Nick Heidfeld in 2005 and Nico Rosberg in 2006. Prior to his 2005 season, the Aussie actually suffered a fractured rib during pre-season testing that he carried through the first two races of the season in Australia and Malaysia. However, he shrugged it off and didn't tell anybody about it until after the Malaysian Grand Prix. In his debut race for the team, he managed to match his career best finish in Australia, albeit starting third place. In Malaysia, he went for a move on Giancarlo Fisichella for third place, but the Italian locked his brakes and slid into the side of Mark, which ended both of their races. Mark would then go on to score points in the next three races with another spectacular qualifying performance in Spain, where he started P2. And then on the 22nd of May 2005, Weber finally took his first Formula 1 podium at the Monaco Grand Prix. Although he was relatively disappointed with the result due to Williams' decision to pit Heidfeld first, which meant that Mark was undercut by his teammate. At the Canadian Grand Prix, he managed to secure another solid result finishing P5, but at the next race in the USA, he was one of the 14 drivers who did not start the race. 
In those first 8 starts of the season, Monk scored 22 points overall, but for the last 10 starts, he failed to score another podium and only scored 14 points. At the end of the year, he described 2005 as frustrating and accepted his reputation had been hurt a little. He was offered a contract from BMW Sauber, but he opted to stay on at Williams to race alongside Nico Rosberg for the 2006 season. Unfortunately, that season, Williams were plagued with unreliability issues and as a result, Weber and Rosberg had a combined total of 11 mechanical-related retirements. He was running up in P4 in Malaysia before a hydraulics failure ended his race on lap 14. In his home race in Australia, he was leading the race, becoming the first Australian to lead the Australian Grand Prix since Jumbo in 1984 before his gearbox failed on lap 22. Although the only reason he was leading was due to other cars in front of him stopping, but nevertheless, he was on to score at least a P6. In Monaco, he qualified on the front row and held third place for a majority of the race before retiring with an exhaust failure. He was on for another podium finish in Germany until another mechanical failure stopped him with 9 laps to go. After scoring just 7 points in 2006 and finishing 14th in the standings, Weber decided to move to Red Bull, going up against a very experienced teammate in David Coulthard. He took his second career podium at the European Grand Prix after Kimi Raikkonen retired with a hydraulic failure. Before this, however, he only scored one point finish out of the first nine races due to suffering from various mechanical-related issues. Although the potential of both the car and Weber, who worked very well to consistently outqualify his more experienced teammate, was highlighted by how close they were to other teams with Renault engines. His best chance at winning a race that year came at the Japanese Grand Prix. During the first safety car period, Weber threw up in his helmet due to suffering from the after effects of food poisoning. He initially came on the radio asking his engineer to retire, but then he changed his mind and decided to continue racing. Such a decision really defines Weber's gritty character and determination to fight through setbacks no matter what. He was running up in second place behind Lewis Hamilton with no further pit stops to make and was rapidly closing in on the Brit who had sustained side pod damage after an incident with Robert Kubica. But on lap 45, Sebastian Vettel ran into the back of his Red Bull, forcing him to retire from the race. In my opinion, this was one of the unluckiest moments in Formula 1 history. The man started the race in P8, persevered through physical sickness and was on the brink of winning his first Formula 1 Grand Prix before being wiped out by a 20-year-old rookie. He ended the season in Brazil with another mechanical failure after running as high as 4th place to end a disappointing but promising season. 2008 was an improvement from last season as he scored points consistently throughout the year. That year, Weber also outscored his teammates by 13 points but failed to make the podium. Highlights from the year include his front row start at the British Grand Prix as well as his performance in Singapore where he was running up in P2 but was forced to retire due to a gearbox failure. Now we get on to 2009, the first season alongside the man who would eventually become his biggest rival, Sebastian Vettel. That season saw him take his first Formula 1 Grand Prix victory at his teammate's home race. After starting from pole for the first time in his career, he had a poor start allowing Barrichello and Hamilton through. While wheel to wheel with the Brazilian, Weber moved over aggressively and made unnecessary contact with him. As a result, he was awarded a drive through penalty and it was looking unlikely that he would take his first Formula 1 win. However, a series of relentlessly quick laps saw Weber close up to Barrichello, who eventually came into the pits to leave the Aussie with clear track in front of him. He continued with his blistering pace and pulled away from his teammates to claim his first Formula 1 victory. His next win would come at the Brazilian Grand Prix after starting second on the grid. Overall, he finished fourth that year with eight podiums to go along with his two victories and one pole position. But during that season, the statistics heavily favoured his German teammate, foreshadowing the way Red Bull would treat him in the future. Twenty ten was one of the greatest Formula One seasons of all time. A battle for the championship between Sebastian Vettel, Fernando Alonso, Lewis Hamilton, Jensen Button, and of course, Mark Webber. In fact, this season was Webber's best shot at taking his first world championship since he entered the sport in 2002. The year got off to a rocky start, finishing 8th, 9th, 2nd and then 8th in the first four races of the season. But back-to-back -back wins in Spain and Monaco saw him seize the lead of the championship, becoming the first Australian to do so since Alan Jones in 1981. Then at the next race, he and Vettel infamously clashed at the Turkish Grand Prix, allowing the McLarens of Lewis Hamilton and Jensen Button to take home a 1-2 finish. 
For the European Grand Prix, he started on the front row alongside his teammates but fell down the order after a dismal first lap to the race. He came in for an early pit stop on lap 7 and rejoined in 18th place. But when attempting to pass Kovalainen for P17, Weber made contact with Heike's right rear wheel, sending him airborne and hitting the barriers at high speed. Thankfully, he emerged from the incident unhurt, but it must have been gutting to lose such crucial points to his rivals and fall from first in the championship to fourth in the space of two races. Nevertheless, he bounced back in Silverstone, but the weekend wasn't short on drama. Coming into the weekend, the team brought two new spec front wings, one for each driver of course. But after FP3, Vettel damaged his front wing in an incident, but instead of reverting back to the old spec one, Red Bull took the new spec front wing from Weber's car and put it on Seb's car. This promoted an angry outburst from the Aussie with public perception being that Red Bull had robbed Weber for the sake of favouring Vettel. But it didn't take long for Weber to get his revenge as he refused to yield on the approach to cops and as a result, Vettel ran wide and sustained a puncture. Weber controlled the race from there and took his third win of the season. But he still wasn't over the apparent favouritism within the Red Bull team, with his first words over the radio being Fantastic guys, not bad for another two driver, cheers. Weber went on to take another win and four podiums in the following six races and going into the Korean Grand Prix, he was leading the championship by 14 points from Alonso. But while running second place on lap 19, he went wide on the exit of turn 12 and spun across the track, collecting Nico Rosberg as he slid back onto the circuit. And just like that, his 14 point lead turned into an 11 point deficit. Weber finished second in Brazil but eighth in Abu Dhabi, which meant his teammate sealed the championship as the final race of the season. And from there, it was inevitable that Mark would become an eternal number two of the team as Vettel went on to take the next three championships in a row. The relationship only worsened as time went on, with the peak coming at the 2013 Malaysian Grand Prix. You will remember the infamous multi-21 incident where Weber was leading the race and Sebastian was told to hold station and look after his tyres. He then proceeded to ignore team orders and attack his teammates with 13 laps to go and eventually getting past. Things got heated in the cooldown room, on the podium and even behind closed doors. But this episode proved to be the final straw as Mark would go on to announce his retirement from the sports later in the season. Mark Webber had an incredible work ethic and it's one of the main reasons why he even got to Formula 1 in the first place. He had this very raw, no BS approach to racing which I personally absolutely loved. He was sensational over one lap, especially in substandard cars like the Jaguar and the Williams. One of my favourite moments was at the Hungarian Grand Prix in 2003 where he qualified third on the grid and 1.6 seconds ahead of his teammate Justin Wilson. 2012 was actually another strong year for him as he took two outstanding victories in Monaco and in Silverstone where he overtook Fernando Alonso on the Wellington Strait with five laps to go. In the first half of the season, he was a major title contender but his winless second half of the season prevented his campaign from progressing. His 2011 season wasn't the best as he only took one win all year and finished 134 points behind his teammates. Nevertheless, he made one of the most iconic overtakes of all time on Fernando Alonso through a rouge at 300 km an hour. However, he lacked the ability to be able to convert when it really mattered most. While under the pressure of a championship fight in 2010, he made one costly error which ended up being the defining factor in his failure to convert. And to be considered one of the greats unfortunately, you have to be able to deliver under those circumstances. I consider Weber to be one of the fastest and most talented drivers at his very best, but not in the same league as multiple world champions like Hamilton, Alonso and Vettel. He definitely had the potential to win a championship but ultimately was unable to do so. But I don't think Mark looks back and regrets anything in his F1 career. Coming from Australia to England in the mid 1990s, he was living in a cold box room in North East London, getting £43 a day and having no clue on how to go about his affairs. He just learned as he went along and built up this tenacity and drive that carried him all the way through to Formula 1. And overall, he was a solid driver who rose to the pinnacle of motorsport and achieved great success in his career. I hope you all enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you're new to enjoy plenty more videos in the future. Leave your thoughts on Mark Webber's career in the comment section below and as always, I'll see you in the next one.